Don here in Florida, and this is a new intro. I had to wipe out all the talk I had to shorten up this video a little bit here. There has been a, a pretty good delay in getting this done, and basically because I was waiting on one part. See if you can determine what that part is as I go through the video, okay? Let's get on it and let's get it done. Okay, I tried getting this when we were doing part two, but I, I don't know if it came out so well. Uh, when I was editing, the video wasn't that clear, didn't show very well. So we're trying another time here. I don't know if you can see this, but th these, these shoes here got smashed over one direction. The, all this section right here got pushed over into this, and all this section here got pushed over into this part here. And I straightened all these out with a pocket knife, and it took some time. Because they're mounted in this rubber and the rubber had been deformed to one side, it wanted to keep springing these back over. So what I did was I put that epoxy in there and that epoxy, as you can see, has held them pretty much in place. They're pretty square now. So what I need to do now is I need to take a Dremel tool and take off the excess epoxy on here. Okay, and that's all it took. Let's get some air and blow that out. This motor's welded onto its base, believe it or not. Okay, turns out that uh, when I was pulling that pulley off of here, I uh, was getting a little mushrooming effect on the end that was causing it to, to not want to come off. And I noticed some rough spots in here, so we're gonna just clean that up so that pulley goes back on a little bit easier. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. Leave it just like that. Okay, we got a couple issues going on here. Um, I went and cleaned that button up. When this spring goes down in here, and this button goes in, right behind it, that button should come up into that enough to create pressure on this rod as it passes through. So the idea is that this rod, no matter where you put it, will stay in place. Well, that's not happening, obviously. So, uh, you know, could we stretch the spring out and make that work? I don't know, let's try it. Put that spring back in now. I don't know if that's gonna create enough interference there. It's not a lot of pressure. Then put the button back in. And then this rod. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, the other issue I'm having with this, it's not really an issue, it's just something I don't like, is apparently these are held in here. They're only allowed to stop by use of a ring here. This is just a little snap ring on there. And I think I'm gonna take that off of there 
and I'm going to put a set of balls on here on the end. So we're going to go over on the lathe and see about putting these balls on here. I think they're just going to look nicer. And, uh, you know, you can screw them off and uh, pull this rod out if you have to. So they'll do the same thing. They'll just look nicer. So let's do that. Okay, so I went ahead and marked off how much we need to take out of there. And these balls are 10 by 150 or 10 millimeter so I changed my caliper over to millimeter here and we're at 10.89 right there so we don't have to take off very much so I'm gonna put the DRO on here and uh, let's get that set up all right there we go and bring a tool down here just slap something in there to cut that with. So just get a off the get an idea where we're at here. Zero the DRO. Start. See how that goes. Then we'll turn it around so we can uh, run that all the way up to the end. All right, let's see if that'll throw it on there. Oh yeah, that's real good. All right, let's take a look at that with the balls on it and see how it is. There. I think that'll be a lot nicer on there. It still wiggles down. I think I'm gonna, I mean, that's probably all right, but I'll probably do something to stiffen that up, I think, maybe just a little bit. Okay, so I found these faucet washers and I drilled them out and I thought they might make keen bumpers so I don't know let's put it on there and see what you think okay so so the question is to bumper or not to bumper that is the question Tell you what, I think I'm gonna leave them on there for right now. Let's get on and do some other things. When we were taking this apart, all the bolts seemed to be coming out a little bit uh, stiff, particularly, uh, which ones were they? These ones over here. So we're gonna just re-tap these or run a tap through them to make sure that, uh, that all our bolts go back in nicely. Just pull these ones down off the wall. They're already loaded and good to go. If you ever go to flea markets and stuff, sometimes you'll find these tap handles, you know, like 50 cents or a dollar each, you know. I just buy up a bunch of them, load up all my taps that I normally use and keep hanging on the wall. It saves me from having to constantly switch taps out. So I'm wondering if it was the bolt that was no good. I'm thinking of putting uh, knurled knobs on here instead of bolts when I put it back together. I did that on the last machine. I'm glad I did. It just saves a lot of effort when you're having to change stuff out. Now this one over here is going a little bit rough and that doesn't surprise me. This was the hardest one to take out. 
but it seems to be clearing up all right. Here. So I'm going to blue these parts here because they get hidden away pretty well and as long as you have some lubricant on them before they get hidden away they tend not to rust and here in Florida we're always chasing rust so I want to make sure that uh, we can keep that rust at bay. had to run and find a, a brush. <laughs> Couldn't find my blue and brush. Sometimes it helps to heat them up a little bit. Shafts are pretty hard. I notice the harder the metal, the harder it is to blue it. Sometimes I do it with a cotton ball if I know it's going to blue real easy. If I think it's going to be tough, I'll do it this way. All right, let's take up the extra here. I had the uh, shaft sitting out there in the sun warming up. I cleaned it all up because I thought I'd just see if maybe bluing might work on this because. The shafts always seem to be the first thing to want to rust. So me uh let's just clean up the end here and just see if it's gonna work on the end before I waste a lot of time on this. Oh lord, that blue's better than the other stuff. Let's do the whole thing then. If I'd known it was gonna do that, I'd have cleaned it right from the beginning. Look at that. That blues off real quick. I like that. Complete magic, isn't it? All right, let's just take a clean up on these parts here, see how they do. Got my steel wool here, we're just gonna brush them out. Yeah, it kind of comes to a off dull gray blue, which is nice. They're gonna soak in oil. Ah, I missed that end. I'm gonna have to come back and do that. It's all right, in no hurry. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's uh, see what it looks like with a little oil on it. Blued up nice. Look at that, it's got different tones in it blue and copper and black. It looks really nice. All right, so that's gonna, I think I'm gonna wrap that up in a rag actually. Okay, we're back looking at the inside of the motor here and a couple of things i've noticed is one these are wearing away right here and here so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean these up and build up this area with some epoxy and then sand it right back down to its proper size so this one's actually a little bit deformed so we're going to take care of that 
The other thing is, looking inside here, the packing material is coming out here. And this is on both of them. We're going to take care of that. <clears throat> but what we're going to do first is this. This makes me believe this motor was modified to run on end because this ball bearing was placed right down in the end down there for the shaft to run on right there. And I don't believe that was originally there because if you look, the gits lube things here stick straight up this way. They weren't meant to be faced up and down like this. So that's another thing we're gonna change. We're gonna try to devise a way for these gits lubers to come out and face up so that we, uh, when we lube this, the oil will stay within the tube and supply the end. I've made up a, a little gits puller here. Um, it's, it'll just insert down in like that. It's got a little hook on the end right there. Right there. That'll go in and we'll use it like a slide hammer. And we'll try to uh, pull that gits out, see what we can do. Try to save it if we can. Okay, let's see how my little invention works here. I hope this does it for me. I'm gonna get it in there. Get it. Gotta get it in there and locked. That seems to have done it right there. There we go. Came right out. Uh, appears to be undamaged at that, so put that to one side. That's a one huge packing orifice in comparison to the uh, size of the bushing. Okay, there's literally no wobble in there. So I guess that's good. All right, we're just making a little flat for that gits and start our hole. Just starting. Okay, we can come back to this. Now we're going to get over into the lathe. Okay, so now I have some stand-up Gitz oilers. Uh, this is the bottom of the case, so this comes out and then allows the Gitz oiler to stand up. So when I add the oil, it will go ahead and go into this tube and stay there until the uh, wick allows it to go out into the bushing. So I can keep it constantly lubricated. And this one here, of course, is on the top, so it'll stand up just like this. 
So it'll stand up just like this on the top of the case. So let me get those driven in there. We should be done with this part. Okay, so last night in the middle of the night I woke up. I remembered I forgot to put the epoxy in here at these points to build that up. <clears throat> so I came out here. I got some tin foil and I wrapped it in tape here because I didn't want the tin foil to stick to the epoxy. I don't mind if the tape sticks to it. And we're just going to pull that off of there. And the tin foil allows it to maintain form. And of course the tape is easily ground away. I don't want to risk having metal in here. Being that it's a motor, it's electrical. So get that out of there now all this can be ground free so i'm going to get the dremel tool and grind that one of the things i did notice is that this actually works in reverse of what i thought it worked uh the sh this actually rides up against here until the motor speeds up and then the counterweights pull this back like that so in this position when it's pushed out it's allowing the capacitor to run to the motor and as it picks up speed it releases and cuts the capacitor out so pretty pretty cool setup I, i've done these years ago but i just had forgotten about that so, so let me go ahead and grind these now Okay, so now what I end up with is a nice, smooth, hard, buttery surface for this to ride up against when I insert it down in there. So, okay, we're going to try for a little reassembly here. <clears throat> I already went ahead and stripped these wires. And I was going to, what we're going to do is we're going to do it with some locking pliers instead because I can control how much crimp I'm applying with the locking pliers better just by adjusting the just by adjusting the gap so Put a dab of grease on that ball before I drop it down in there and that's mainly just so the ball stays centered when I put it in place with this pick I'm gonna take out the excess grease here as well I'm gonna push that packing back a little bit more so if we get a look down in there we can see the ball down at the very bottom right there it's centered right in inside its groove right there this packing here it likes to spring out i've been keep pushing it back in so let's see what happens all right i got a little bit of atlas 20 weight i'm going to put on here just to get it going here make sure everything's clean and drop this in and there we go just like that and this is kind of nice because the uh, there's actually holes through that rubber that these come up through, so it holds it right in place. So I like that. Yeah, some of these newer motors, you have to fiddle around to try to get everything lined up. So that's not too cool. So There we go. <laughs> There she goes, she turns just like a new one. Okay, so let's wire these babies in here. There we go, just hand tight. All right, so let's 
so let's get these ones in here. I got a grommet for this, which we'll fix later. Looks like I made that line just a little bit too long. Here we go. All right. Uh, probably we ought to take it for a test run here before we put anything else back together. So let me get an extension cord. So let's just take it for a little test run here, see if it works. There she goes. Just like a champ. Of course, it's supposed to be running on end like this because that bearing at the end, but that's okay. We know it works. First thing is we're going to have to wire these light outlets here. So let's get that done. All right, and then we'll see about soldering these in. So. Normally I'd screw them in, but I think I'm just going to solder them today. Okay, so now these will jump over to here. What I did was I went out uh, looking and found me a long, this is about a 12 foot long cable from a vacuum cleaner that was being junked out on the side of the road and I just took my clippers along. Sometimes it pays to scrounge. So we're gonna probably use about uh, four or five feet of this. Wires. I like these vacuum cleaner cables because they, I know they're gonna carry at least 12 amps, at least. And I know they're rated for higher than that, so they're very flexible very very nice cables and people just throw their their vacuum cleaners and other items away without thinking about this there's a lot of cool parts you can salvage off those things so just kind of keep that in mind if you have stuff you're getting ready to throw away i prize these vacuum cleaner cables I used to have a whole bunch of them, but I used them up on all my projects. So I had to go scrounging yesterday. I've really come to like these uh, battery powered soldering irons. I had a gas powered one explode in my hands, made a big old fireball. <laughs> I said, okay, never again. And I've been using my corded one for years, and then I started buying all these M12 Milwaukee tools. My goodness, they're probably the best battery tools I've ever owned. I love them. I've got the M28 stuff, and I really like that, but it's a lot heavier. This, this M12 stuff is just so easy to, to work with. All right, let me check all my connections here before I call them good. Got a little excess on this one. I'm going to trim. All right, I know that looks like a mucked up mess in there, uh, but we've got our lights in and our switches. Once the holes for the switches are drilled and the switches are in place, uh, that'll all clean up on its own. And the outlet for the motor, we're going to put right back here. All this is going to be epoxied into place. And I'm going to use epoxy because I don't want to drill more holes into this casting than I have to. And the epoxy really does hold up really well on this stuff. So hang on a second. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of epoxy down in here. And just push it down in like that. And believe it or not, this is going to really hold it better than I need it to be held. But you know what? That's okay. This is the plug for the motor. And I'm going to just coat the inside of the casting here where it goes in. I'm going to have to repaint that some a little bit, I guess. And I'll do the plug itself here on the back side. And the edges here. Try not to get it on me. 
and then we'll set that into place right here and I'm gonna clamp that just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere while it's hardening and that should keep it honest while it's hardening up so and I got this clamped up here once all that's hardened up I can come back and touch up paint this and put any in any extra adhesive that I need so I've also got my cable guide on here this will guide the cable and act as a ground once this is all together so I didn't want to put that in until I was ready so preparing my nickel bath solution so we can do a little bit of nickel plating well, that sure is pretty Let's take a look at these. Okay, so we got our nickel plating done. And just to point out a few differences here, this part here, the chuck, was nickel bathed and twice or three times, and we just cleaned it up with a Scotch Brite. Same goes for this. This was nickel bathed and I just put it on the buffing wheel and it has a duller appearance and I think that's because I didn't scotch bright it out first. So, but I think it looks nice. It has a true nickel color to it. This one here, uh, I gave it a quick scotch bright and then a nice little polish. This part here, I, I left in the bath way too long. It's one of those deals where I got called in for dinner and I'm trying to eat dinner really quick and the wild eyed fun exterminator said are you trying to go somewhere anyway this got left in the nickel bath way too long I thought of taking it all back off and starting over because it, it's got kind of like a crusty look to it but once I cleaned it up I, I kind of actually like the look it has kind of an alligator look to it so I'm gonna leave it these parts here I just gave a, a quick run on the buffer as well and then a cleanup with some polishing pastes and, and I think they all came out pretty well. It kind of shows the differences in what you can do with nickel. So I kind of like that. So we're almost ready to start putting this back together now. I just got to run off a few uh, knobs here and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I made up some knobs. These are going to be the knobs that I use to hold the motor in place. We're going to do away with the bolts. This is the this is a knob that I made in place of that bolt that was bent when we took it apart on the uh, first video. If you don't remember that go back and you can see where it was jammed up and that was the bolt I replaced I think I threw it away at this point and these are a couple of brass uh, knurled knobs that I made for the when I did this you can actually see the indent it's flat now but it was causing it to not move through the collar very well the collar was catching up on that so once I got that flat I decided there's no way I'm gonna put a, a steel uh, screw back in there so I made a brass one for there and then I made another brass one for this because this also got a good uh, indent on it that one and that one are probably originals and these are the ones I made and then same thing with the bolts I had original bolts here and uh, I had to make a couple new ones so they all matched and on the nut side they had to be that size to uh, go into the plate so that they wouldn't turn because that they're fitted into that. Yeah. So now we get power for the motor. Here. Like that. The uh, counter sunk area here or the counterboard area here you want that to go up there we go Go. Let me 
see those two flat spots right there that's where these line up right here and here there we go turn it to this side okay the next thing is going to be putting the spindle back together so a little bumper and our rubber and our other bumper and that has a spot that it goes into right there with that allen screw so bring that down and with the lube i'm gonna loop this up a little bit here okay so teeth go back like this get those lined all up in there all right so all the way up and Remember this has marks on it, so we have a pointer that comes off here, so we want to kind of have that zero right about where that pointer is going to be when it's all the way up. So there we go. Okay, so let's put uh, this on. And that would be a stop like that. But I found this in my toolbox and it had been sitting for 20 years so I figured I might as well use it so I made up a uh, little t-nut to go inside that hole right there so the number eight Okay, so we got that uh, chain on there. I made up this collar to hold the key in place. So just a little piece of scrap brass I had laying around. There, just allow me to just pull the key down like that and have it handy. Okay, so we got the uh, chuck all cleaned out here. I'm just double checking. Get that on there, as long as we're at this point. So let's move around to the other side. Let's get this in here. A little bit of oil on it first. There we go. That's a nice, whoa, almost snapped myself in the head with it. Real nice feel there. Let's see if we can lock it, there we go. Just like that. Okay, this is what I was talking about before, having a, basically a funnel to get down into that hole that's under there. You can feel it line right up and fall right in. 
when you get it into place so that should make oil in that quite a bit easier let's go over on the bench now and get this motor hooked up okay so there's our plate and this is what i was talking about where those, those nuts have to be the same size as the back of that plate because they lock right into that plate i guess that's to make it easier to put together adjust so i'm gonna go ahead and get the motor on here i'm gonna put a rag under this there we go okay all right hang on let's get the pulley on there So another project completed. What to do next, who knows? Uh, I saw an old Logan lathe out at the scrapyard. Maybe I'll pick that up. Oh, there goes the garbage man. He looks happy today. Yeah, nobody wants stuff like that anymore and I don't have room for it. So I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this series. And as always from Florida, Dawn out.